The next biggest and pressing problem we have is access to the internet and an unlikely source of a very remarkable way of providing that is Facebook's internet.org. And here to speak to us is, uh, is uh, 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 a Facebook VP, Chris Daniels. He's going to tell us about this remarkable system that probably would have been running if you know, another South African hadn't blown up the bloody rocket. <laughs> I, I apologize on behalf of all people from Pretoria. We won't do it again. Give us another $200 million rocket. We won't blow it up again. I'm going to take you up on that. Um, so hi, I'm Chris Daniels, uh, and I'm from Facebook, and I'm here to talk about the, I think the topic was the transformative power of connectivity, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to focus most of the time on one specific idea that we've got that we're rolling out around the world uh, to bring connectivity to places where it hasn't been before. So I'll start with a couple of statistics. The statistics that I'm going to start with are first, uh, the ITU now says that 28% of Africa is online. That's fantastic. So we're seeing internet penetration rising very, very steeply in Africa. The second statistic that I'm going to share is that in 2020, the average monthly consumption of a data user in Africa is going to be 14 times what, is it, what it is today. So that growth is going to continue. Why is it going to continue? Because this industry has been doing great work in cooperation with governments around the world and around Africa in particular, for the Africa statistics, to bring people online. And we are going to continue to do work on our part to bring people online. As you know, Facebook's mission is to make the world more open and connected. And we have an initiative at uh, Facebook called Internet.org that I lead, which is our mission is to bring the half of the world who's not connected to the Internet online as soon as possible. I want to talk today about one subset of internet.org. We've got a lot of things that we do within internet.org. We have our initiatives with satellites, our adventures or misadventures with satellites in some cases. We have solar planes that a lot of you have probably heard about and are now flying and will soon connect the world uh, via solar planes with internet access. We have Free Basics, uh, which is live in over 50 countries around the world. But this one is an idea that we had where we basically said, what if we could get the ability for any entrepreneur in any city around the world to bring Wi-Fi to their community and to set up a small business selling Wi-Fi to their community. Could that work? And that's what Express Wi-Fi is. A little bit about Wi-Fi. Everybody knows what Wi-Fi is. There's kind of two ways that most phones can connect to the internet. Way number one is a cellular connection, 2G, 3G, 4G. The second way, unlicensed spectrum, is Wi-Fi. Most phones around the world now are Wi-Fi compatible. So if we could bring Wi-Fi to everywhere in the world, what would that look like? Our focus here was a sustainable economic model. That's the core of Express Wi-Fi, one that can pay for the operational expense of running the Wi-Fi network, one that can pay for the capex that it requires to set up that network. So that's the very core of what we're doing with Express Wi-Fi. Let me talk a little bit about what the, the ecosystem around Express Wi-Fi looks like, and then I'll get into more detail of what the, the network itself starts to look like. So first of all, the ecosystem. What is Facebook doing? We're building tools and technology to allow ISPs to set up and manage these networks and to allow retailers to sell to end users internet connectivity. The ISPs are the people who set up, manage the networks. They also, uh, any regulatory compliance that needs to take place, they are responsible for that. We partner with ISPs. We partner with big MNOs uh, for Express Wi-Fi. Then there's the retailer. The retailer, to me, is the key to this entire program. This is a small business owner in any town, in Africa, anywhere in the world. And their responsibility is actually to set up a Wi-Fi hotspot, pick the location. They know their town best. They're going to know where people are, where people want to use Wi-Fi. Their responsibility is to do marketing of Wi-Fi. So they go out and tell people, the Wi-Fi is available at this location. Come buy it from me. Here's the price. And then they ultimately provision the service to the end user. And we've provided the software that lets them do that provisioning. So we'll look at a little bit at the ecosystem and what it looks like. I've talked about the retailer and their role in terms of setting up the hotspot, maintaining the hotspot, providing the location. There's no rent. They provide the rent. It's typically in the store that they've already set up. These are people who are maybe selling SIM cards, maybe selling mobile devices already, or maybe they have a business that has nothing to do with mobility, mo mobile connectivity at all, and they decided Express Wi-Fi is something I want to offer my customer base. They set that up. Within about a 100 meter radius, which is the general range of a Wi-Fi hotspot, any end user can come and connect to that. What does it mean for the end user when they have 
access to reliable, affordable Wi-Fi. I can tell you what it means for sure in India, uh, which is one place that we've got most of our express Wi-Fi locations today. In India, it means that they get three times the speed at one-third the price of a 3G connection. That's pretty darn good. It's an incredible value proposition to people. Let me just zoom out as to what this network looks like. So the retailer, we have to connect that retailer's hotspot to the internet. Today, most of the express Wi-Fi hotspots are connected via microwave backhaul to some fiber drop. But we also have a lot of the connections that we have and the express Wi-Fi locations that we have in Africa are actually connected via satellite. In the future, we're going to be completely backhaul agnostic. So in the future, we're going to have our Aquila planes being able to connect and provide the backhaul solution for express Wi-Fi as well. Take one more step out. There's not fiber everywhere. So what we have to do is we find a fiber location represented by the retailer all the way at the left here. Find one fiber location, and from there, we daisy chain microwave connections all the way out to the very ends. So what does this mean? I was in uh, Rajasthan in India, where we have a, a pretty large express Wi-Fi uh, deployment rolled out. I was just there about three weeks ago. That fiber drop is in a town of about, let's call it 50, 70,000 people in terms of population. From there, the very ends of the network go out to towns as small as 2,500 people. The thing that surprised me is that the economic model is working equally well in either location. Why is that? Because the people in towns that are 2,500 people, they don't have any other way to access internet connectivity. They have very, very slow 2G connection at best, maybe no connection, and so having Wi-Fi there is brand new connectivity for them. In the big towns, the economic model works very well. When you want to do video calling, when you want to download videos, when you want high bandwidth, high reliability access, you can go to your Wi-Fi hotspot, and it's cheap. The one problem with daisy chaining microwave is that if there's a power outage along the way, your whole network might go out. So we're also working on technology that's actually going to provide redundancy. So that if one does go out, we can simply change the direction of the microwave and go ahead and make sure that all of the other hotspots still remain up and still remain live and running. So let's talk about some of the benefits that we've seen brought by Express Wi-Fi. First around connectivity, then I'm going to talk about small and medium businesses that have grown up around Express Wi-Fi, and finally around local skill development, which is one that I'm pretty excited about. So first around connectivity, let's talk about the scope of connectivity for Express Wi-Fi today. We're live in five countries, so India, Indonesia, Tanzania, Tanzania, Nigeria, South Africa, soon to be six. Ghana is going to be the next. Next year, we'll be in a couple more African markets, a few more markets generally around the world. We have about 150 locations. We have many more hotspots than we have locations. In some locations, we have multiple hotspots per location so that people can have access in, in many, many places. Let's talk about the impact to people who get access. This was in a town in Rajasthan, and one of the local trades is uh, women who make saris. And what I heard when I got there was that the Wi-Fi has been a big hit. I went to one of our most successful retailers for Express Wi-Fi, and I asked him, why has he been successful? One of the reasons he pointed to is that the women in the factories making the saris are doing two things with Express Wi-Fi. Number one, finding new buyers. Number two, finding the best price. When you have connectivity, small businesses build. It's good for small businesses. This is actually a pattern that we're seeing. We see banks signing up very consistently as business customers for Express Wi-Fi. They need connectivity with their central headquarters. We see other small businesses signing up for Express Wi-Fi. It actually helps the local economy to have brought connectivity to where it's never been before. This is the roots at this level of the 1.4% GDP increase that everybody was talking about. Let's talk about small and medium businesses. So this is Rosemary. She's an Express Wi-Fi retailer in Lagos, Nigeria. Mark was just in Lagos, Nigeria. He met with Rosemary. So Rosemary told him, I have 3,000 customers using Express Wi-Fi. And this now represents a significant portion of the income that she earns. What I heard when I've gone out and I've talked to many retailers who are using Express Wi-Fi is that their revenue has gone up by 10 to 100%. So they're doubling their revenue in some cases that they earn on a monthly basis. 
These are small retailers who have a variety of different businesses. This is good for their families, and it's also good for their communities. They're building businesses based on selling connectivity. When you build businesses based on connectivity, a lot of people get excited about it. This is, these are some of our uh, deployments that we have here in Africa. One of the things that is really cool that I've seen around Express Wi-Fi is that in order to keep the operational costs low, our partners have become pretty innovative in how they're staffing the, the setup and the maintenance of the networks. What they're doing is they're hiring local people to learn how to install the networks, and then they are the people, the locals, who are called when something goes wrong with the networks. What this means is that there are new skills being developed out in the very rural areas that now have connectivity. Those people can then apply for other jobs and can use those skills in other areas. And it's very cheap when something goes wrong with the network to send somebody out because they're already there. They're local. So these are some of the people, some of the uh, staff that are maintaining one of our Wi-Fi networks. They also give us great advice. So one of the guys who's doing maintenance on the network he said, hey, if you just point the access point in this direction towards these homes, you're going to cover hundreds of people who are living in their homes. Suddenly, we found ourselves pri providing residential internet access through Express Wi-Fi because people said, hey, that's what we want. That's what the people need. That's what they're going to buy. Revenues immediately go up. So when you have locals invested in a sustainable economic model, you're going to see innovation and knowledge come to bear, and you're going to see economies grow it's going to bring connectivity even farther than you had thought. There's also, I couldn't come from Silicon Valley and not talk about some of the innovations that we're seeing, so I'm going to touch on some of these. A few innovations that we're using in the field and are going to be using in the field. The first is TV white space. We're going to be rolling out a deployment where the backhaul, instead of being microwave, is going to be entirely TV white space. What's this going to do for us? We're going to have a very, very broad range for that white space because those waves travel a very, very long way, not necessarily, not even line of sight. And it's going to make it easy for us to set up and potentially move access points. We no longer have to think about pointing those microwave beams. So we're going to give that a try, see how that works. I'm pretty excited about this technology. The second thing that we're doing is when you've got a 100 meter radius, that can be pretty confining. And the number one complaint that we get is the range of Wi-Fi and that people want more range when the Wi-Fi comes to their town. So we're using dual frequency network extension technology or kind of Wi-Fi mesh technology in order to extend the reach of the networks. So we, can, we typically set up our first hotspot right in a retailer shop, but we want to go from there towards the residential areas and get connectivity to the places where people live their lives every single day. That way they can use the internet every single day. The third is an interesting story that I'll kind of end with and share, which is we typically have been using, you can see this is one of our relay points for microwave, and you can see a solar panel there at the bottom. We've typically been using solar as a backup technology. But at this location, there was a construction project and power was cut for 21 days. And the solar panel that we put up kept the network running for 21 days. And we thought, what are we doing using this as backup? This looks like the primary. <laughs> but the reason we weren't using it as primary, and the reason we had put it at this specific relay point was because it was an important relay point, was because it was too expensive. Between the battery and the solar panel, it actually cost too much. The business model stopped working. But we put it, we bore the expense to give it a shot and to put it at this important relay point, which sent the network in a couple directions. So one of our partners said, hey, I happen to be I happen to also work for a solar energy company. Here's what I can do. I can, I can start to provide panels that are a quarter of the size and batteries that are a quarter of the size. And I know from that 21 days of experience that that quarter size and roughly quarter cost solar panel and battery, they could have powered us that entire 21 days as well. With that price, it's now within the realm of economic feasibility. So we're actually bringing down the size making specific size batteries, specific size solar cells in order to power the Express Wi-Fi networks. So that's what Express Wi-Fi is all about. We're in five countries going on six, seven, eight, nine, ten next year. The coolest thing about Express Wi-Fi, in my opinion, is it's a sustainable economic model. And with a sustainable economic model, you see entire economies forming around connectivity. Once that happens, 
it spreads itself. Our partners that we have today, we're not talking to them about trials anymore. We're talking to them about 1,000 plus location expansions next year. So I expect Express Wi-Fi to be in many more countries and to be into the high thousands or past tens of thousands hotspots next year. And I'm hoping that it's going to be coming everywhere. So that's what we're doing as Facebook. Thanks.